Divine Truth Interviews. Jesus, Mary, and others are interviewed by members of the media and the public. This is the first part of the interview, God, Religion and Atheism, ABC Q&A, Dockings and Pell. We're after watching an interview between prominent atheist Richard Dawkins and Catholic Australian Cardinal Gregory Pell, aired on the ABC Q&A TV program in Australia. Mary begins an interview of Jesus about God, religion, and atheism, comparing Jesus' answers with those given on the TV program. The session was recorded on the 3rd of April 2018 from 2.40 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hi, everyone. Welcome to a new interview series that I'm starting with Jesus today. (laughs) This series is going to be on religion and atheism. And I've prepared this uh, series of questions. They are all based on questions that were posed during a Q&A program entitled Religion and Atheism, which aired here in Australia on the ABC in, in 2012. So what I thought would be really interesting is that on the Q&A program, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, there's a, there's a panel of guests usually and people from Australia can come and be a part of the audience and they pose questions to the panel uh, or they can do it via Twitter or email or, or whatever. So um, what, what I liked about this, uh, this idea is that uh, we could have Jesus answer some questions from the public. <laughs> <laughs> and also um, there was only two guests on the panel on this night in April 2012 and they were... Um, Richard Dawkins, who's the author of The God Delusion, um, and Cardinal George Pell, who is an Australian cardinal who now is in charge of finances at the Vatican, so quite a prominent Catholic. Uh, he's, he's also quite prominent in that um, here in Australia, there's been a lot of um, criticism of him because he, he, was, um, he served in the diocese uh, of Ballarat, uh, it, where in which Ballarat is in, in New South Wales and... In he, Victoria. In Victoria. <laughs> in I don't know where they're going to In Victoria. And there was a huge incidence of child sexual abuse by priests in, in that, in, in Ballarat. And he, he's denied that he had full knowledge of those abuses, which many people are critical of. And he's also, he's attended court with, you know, a renowned pedophile who was also a priest and so there's a lot of, um, he's quite an interesting figure in Australia, but very prominent Catholic, and he was chosen to be a guest on this religion and athe- atheism panel. So, yeah, so in this series, I'm actually going to ask you the questions that were asked of uh, Richard Dawkins and um, George Pell, and I'll also probably raise some of their answers, the answers that they gave on the program, mm-hmm. and have you respond to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, if anyone is interested, you can actually access a full transcript of the the program and also watch it, as far as I'm aware, on YouTube, the entire program. And um, we'll try and put some links in the outline that I prepare uh, for this series to, so you can go and access those if you if you want to see it. It's uh, I mean, it might give some context to what also what we're talking about here. Mm. Well, before we start, I wanted to ask you some introductory questions. Mm -hmm. These aren't questions that were asked during the program. These are just what I feel uh, are very important questions we need to answer before we before we start Mm -hmm. speaking. Good. So the first set of questions is about religion. Yes. And it's very common on Earth, isn't it, that people don't separate God from religion. No. And, and to me, those two things are, are actually very separate. <laughs> mm. um, but, they're, but most people don't, they, they, they're synonymous for most people. They mm. conceptualize them synonymously. So, so can you please define how y- your explanation of religion, <laughs> <laughs> explain how you define religion is a better mm-hmm. way of saying it, its purpose, and why people are attracted to join or stay in a religion. 
Yeah, well, it's a fairly complex subject, really, as to mm. why religions get created on Earth. Most of them come from uh, the spirit world, actually. Yeah, they're created first in the spirit world, and then they are subsequently created on Earth through a method of transference of information between spirits and people on Earth. So, so with regard to religion itself, there's some interesting reasons as to why we want to create a religion. But then there's also an interesting subject about what kind of religion gets created and why those kinds of religions get created. Mm -hmm. So the very first reason why we want to create a religion is really because deep inside the human soul, there is a desire to know the truth about subjects such as, is there a, a bigger universe than, you know, just that we can see? Is there a creator mm -hmm. is there um life beyond death mm -hmm. and su such questions of a spiritual you could say are of a spiritual nature or or classified to be of a spiritual nature in my mind spirituality is all about love mm -hmm. but in most people's minds spirituality is all about knowing the unknown mm. now there is a strong uh, desire of the human soul to know the unknown so so this creates a degree of mysticism and, and uh, desire for knowledge of what you cannot see. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, it then gets heavily manipulated. This, this, what is a pure desire of the soul, gets heavily manipulated by our upbringing and our social uh, environment. Mm -hmm. So, so what, what starts out to be a pure desire to know things that are unknown, mm -hmm. which is really, in a similar way, a similar desire to what science has, which yeah. is a desire to know what is not known. Mm -hmm. um, there is, unfortunately now, a mixture of emotions involved that then cause a religious construct to be raised. Mm -hmm. Now, religious constructs are raised not just because of that pure desire, yeah. but because of a desire, other desires of humanity, the desire to manipulate, the desire to control, the desire to enforce, mm -hmm. the desire to impose morality. The, you know, there are so many reasons why humans come up with a religious format, which is then assumed or purported mm -hmm. to be God's viewpoint on matters. Yeah. And, and so there is a serious flaw in this, obviously, mm -hmm. because obviously all of God's truth in the universe, like just one truth about gravity, for example, if you discuss the truth fully about just one scientific truth, mm -hmm. it would fill volumes of information. So, so to purport to have one book, like such as the Koran or the Bible, which contains all of and the sum total of God's truth mm -hmm. is absolutely ludicrous. But then to base a religion and a way of life on it is, is, is even more so, really. Yeah. Yeah. So most religions start out uh, or come about initially from this mixture of some pure desire that's inside mm -hmm. of all of humanity mm -hmm. to know the truth about the universe in which we live mixed with a lot of impure addictions and desires and quite often evil addictions and desires that are driven to control and, and control the will of the masses. And, uh, and, and so you can see to define religion, it's very, very difficult to yeah. define religion really. Most religion on this planet, uh, all religion on this planet at this point in time uh, is really a human construct. Mm -hmm about what they believe about the things they don't know, not the truth about <laughs> anything we don't know. <laughs> yes, and you're saying, so you're saying there's some, um, perhaps a level of purity that causes the religion to become established or people to join the religion or be... Well, not really. But, there, there's a level of purity in the desire to know. Yes. You know, that, that is a pure desire. God encourages that desire, actually. And so there is a desire to know things that we don't know. Mm -hmm. And and my feelings are everything we don't know about God and everything we don't know about the universe is still of a scientific nature. Mm -hmm. But people have classified that as being different to religion. Mm. Religion has become more of an idea or a concept that you've got to put faith in mm -hmm. without there being any basis of knowledge of, of reality. 
And unfortunately, it gets perpetrated and, and promulgated through the centuries through a lot of very d dark and uh, devious emotions, um, e evil emotions, mm -hmm. actually, to control people and to manipulate people into doing certain things that they feel they would not otherwise do unless they had that religious faith. Mm, that so exists. there's sort of a few parts of this question, though. The, the first part was explain and define the religion. So yes. hopefully I've done that part. Yes, and to if a we could, could we just summarize that? Yeah. So, so um, there's an innate or an instinctual or a, a desire within humans that God has put there to know the unknown. Yes. Um, however, there's um, what happens when religions are created, they seek to answer those questions and then impose those, what they come up with as what is God's. Well, the problem is they don't seek to answer the questions with truth. Mm -hmm. They only seek to postulate ideas which they then can claim are truth, gotcha. which, which, is very, which is very wrong, actually, to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. And then they use those postulated ideas, which are really just the dreams out of somebody's head, whether yes. it's a spirit or a person on earth, and they turn it into actual fact or reality which is very very dangerous thing to do and then and then you also mention another element where the personal emotional addictions of the people involved in doing that become imbued in the teaching and then that's used as a method of social or individual control yes and this comes to the second part of the question of why what's the purpose of religion well mm -hmm. you know if you if you just maintain that pure desire the purpose would be grand you know, it's yes. a discovery of new truth, a yes. scientific discovery of new truth. Mm -hmm. That's its grand, the grand purpose, really. And, and what about this um, idea of uh, having a communion with God through prayer or song or uh, community? Or you, there's well, there's, a lot of there's that, that to it as well. But mm -hmm. my feeling is that most people don't believe that's possible. Yeah. They believe, if they believe in God at all, they believe that God is far beyond our capacity to either understand or commune with. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and most people who have been religious for many years uh, get into a state of disillusionment a lot of the times about their possibility of a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. So while that might be the initial driving factor, frequently it turns into something quite different to that. Gotcha. But also, um, why are people attracted to it? Well, uh, our attractions are very much determined by our unhealed emotional condition mm -hmm. and that in other words our addictions in play and those addictions were established in our childhood frequently so so you find there's religious formats that are very uh, masculine dominated my a male god mm -hmm. you know with with very stringent rules and if you break them you get punished yeah. Uh, which is a combination of w the way a human father would act with his child mm -hmm. mixed with a lot of sort of evil behaviour, really. Yeah. Uh, who, uh, a, a concept that a, a, a God exists that is uh, autocratic and violent. Mm -hmm. And then uh, on other ones, there's this concept that there's no God at all and we're, we're all gods. And, you know, so mm -hmm. e each one has its flaws and each one has its merits yeah. uh, in truth some of time. But most of the flaws and the merits are actually to do with how it satisfies the particular emotional condition of the people that are attracted to it. Yeah. So in this way, uh, religion has become the opiate of the masses <laughs> in many ways yeah. because it, 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 people want to believe certain things rather than are willing to discover to say, well, no, we don't know that for a fact mm -hmm. and we have to discover it. And and even more than that, they want to know it without communicating with the God who created it. Mm -hmm. So so now, or even even uh, believe that a God created it. And so now uh, the religion now has really become a method of control of people and the amassing of wealth and mm -hmm. power mm -hmm. rather than what it was really, what it, if, if there was such a pure intention to have a religion, and I don't know if there really is, the better course of action would be to have one that at least desired to know scientific truth and and didn't punish and, and treat violently the people who didn't agree. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just to recap a little bit on some of your points, um, would you say then that the uh, 
I might be attracted to a religion that doesn't confront my already established openness to what I perceive God to be and the rules of living should be. That's right. So there's already a condition that's already inside of me that's opened me up to a, a belief system. It's and most of the time that with... condition is determined by your forefathers, your yes. parents, you know, and their and the subsequent lineage. Mm -hmm. And it's only recently that people have broken away from that, really. Mm -hmm. and, and even then, there's still a, even though they break a, might break away from a religious faith, frequently there is still the underlying hurt emotions that are present within the person that attracts them to another one that's very similar. Yes, like a Catholic who's raised on this idea that, you you know, you should be guilty and you're forever sinful and God's a punishing wrathful God and all of this, and then they become attracted to a New Age philosophy that says there is no sin, it's all good and evil and all together that's and right. the dichotomy is wonderful and you can't have the light without the dark and don't worry. And it's really yeah, basically ph happy. philosophical mumbo jumbo. <laughs> but what they've done is gone from uh, one false belief, which yeah. is very determined and strict and, and... And maybe felt very hurt in that. Frequently. Yes. And then they've swung right the way through to the other side of the pendulum, which is there is no such thing as needing to follow any rules and there's no such thing as any morals and there's no... You know what I mean? To avoid that same hurt. And then there's ones saying. who say, okay, let's dismiss God from the whole thing and dismiss yep. religion and let's just try to be good people, yep. you know. But how they define good people is very different too, you know, because yep. that is also determined by your upbringing. Yep. If, if you're, you know, if you think stealing is good, uh, mm -hmm. you'll think you're a good person even though you steal. Yep, <laughs> you yep, <know>? yep. <laughs> and, that, and that is how it is. It's yep. like, uh, we don't understand and still humanity does not understand clearly how much of a large impact your formative years mm -hmm. has upon all of your belief systems and all of your actions after that point. Mm. 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 Okay, so we're attracted to join a religion based on what is congruent with what we already believe or what helps us avoid some hurt from the past. Yeah, or in rebellion to what our parents believe, mm -hmm. you know. There, there's which is a, an avoidance. Which is an avoidance too. Yeah. So there are many reasons why a person is attracted to specific religious faiths. Very few of those have anything to do with what is truth. Yes. But rather have a lot to do with, you know, wanting a certain lifestyle or wanting certain approvals and acceptance and wanting to be a part of a community. And there's many other social reasons for having a religion. Mm -hmm. none, none of these things are to do with actual discovery of truth. Yeah. And none of them are to do with that initial soul-based feeling mm -hmm. that of, I want to know what is true. And I even want to know what is true about, is there a God? And if God exists, can I have a relationship? And what is the universe and how does the human, the human soul fit into it? Mm -hmm. And what is what is going to happen to me after I die, mm. you know, after my physical body has gone? All those kind of questions are generally still unresolved by religion. They have a lot of concepts about mm -hmm. it or ideas about it, very some of which are very rudimentary and basic mm -hmm. and certainly don't match any scientific truth. Mm -hmm. And and yet they hold on to them because that's what they wish to believe rather than to discover the wonderful truth that is beyond it. Yes. Mm. Yes. All right. So um, to quickly recap the purpose then of religion, now that you've said all of that. Well, you know, it depends uh, again on how we're looking at it. Mm -hmm. you know, for many people, the purpose, if, if they're a person who's a, a controller of religious faith, for many times it's a, it's a matter of power. Yeah. Or, or wealth. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, there's many religions that have been created just for specifically for the creation of wealth um, or power. And for others, it's about social acceptance and approval. So it's different for every individual. So I don't think you can give one blanket answer and say this is the yes. reason why. There are just so many contributing factors emotionally as to why mm -hmm. a religious faith gets created. And, and then also contributing factors as to why a person is pre- like conditioned yeah. to accept that religious faith as their own, yes. even though there is no scientific proof of the faith belief system. Yeah. So, you know, there's, for example, in the Christian faith belief system, there is no scientific proof that Jesus' blood saves you from anything. No. Right? None whatsoever. And the reality is it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Right. But 
that's what the majority of Christians believe, because mm -hmm. the Bible says that's what you believe, and you've got to have faith in it to be saved. And they believe somehow that that's going to save them, and it doesn't. Mm -hmm. But And there's no proof that it does, but... Uh, Unfortunately, a lot of people would look, prefer to believe that than believe that actually what saves you is your own purifying your own desires and your own passions in harmony with God's. And then what eventually saves you, if, if you want to be really saved in terms of have a forever everlasting existence, is God's love entering you. That's yeah. what saves you. But, you know, these kind of concepts are not understood by religious faiths on the earth. And so, you know, they perpetrate other beliefs which are blatantly false illogical mm -hmm. and but supported by emotional injuries mm. Mm. now just finally before we move on you mentioned right in the beginning that most religions begin through well you didn't say it but do you mean through inspiration from spirits who are so people who've already passed do you want to expand on that at all yes uh People on Earth, uh, historically, yep. uh, particularly after the fall of humanity um, during that period of time, which happened over 150,000 years ago, um, during the fall, after the fall, people were just more worried about their day-to-day -day existence. It was a dog-eat-dog, -dog, as we say nowadays, world, mm -hmm. um, very violent. Most people never lived beyond the age of 30, and, uh, and most people were just worried about existing. Um, to, to actually develop a desire to know anything beyond your own existence, you need to have a relatively safe and secure environment mm -hmm. in which to live. And that wasn't available at that time. You know, it was very, very much a violent uh, sort of environment perpetrated, of course, by the human condition. Mm -hmm. And so um, for the majority of people, um, you know, even right now today, survival is the is the main thing that dominates their thinking and mm -hmm. their actions mm -hmm. now of course in the western world today we now have more time on our hands because survival is able to be uh you know we're able to survive through less effort yeah and so what then happens is we have time to think but unfortunately for most of us we're heavily in our addictions and so what we do is instead of spending that time pondering the massive questions of the universe for very long periods of time, we uh, spend most of the time meeting our own addictions. Yeah. And uh, in our frenzy of uh, sexual, emotional and physical uh, feeding frenzy. And, uh, and of course, that doesn't give you much truth either. <laughs> so, yeah. so, you know, finding sources of truth on the planet today even truth regarding natural love let alone god's love is very rare mm -hmm. and and certainly most religions don't have it mm -hmm. but they do have little bits of it mm -hmm. and many times mm. um, some of which is blatantly obvious and so that's why it's incorporated in religious faith but um but unfortunately not much of it is scientific very little of it is loving mm -hmm. and as a result it causes a lot of damage to mm. the planet now, you were going to mention about how spirits play a part in that. Well, the, how spirits play a part in that is that because humanity has sort of been for many, many, you know, millennia mm -hmm. in a state of survival only, the very first religious face were actually created in the spirit world. And what I mean by that is that people on the earth passed over into the spirit world they developed in love a little bit mm -hmm. and then they started coming up with, because they had more time on their hands obviously they don't have to worry about survival they know yes. now that they survive seemingly forever so yeah. now they've got time to investigate so they start investigating things and then they come up with concepts of ideas but of course many of them have a personal feeling that they want some kind of attention and approval as well yeah and so what they'd start doing now is dominating people on the earth to have their ideas and to even potentially worship them. A lot of the very first religious faiths were about the gods mm. and the gods were considered, who were, who were actually people who had passed from earth, yep. who had now become powerful beings because they now had a bit more knowledge and who would now manipulate events on earth that people would be suspicious of. And so a lot of the Grecian Roman gods were all people on earth that mm -hmm. were known historically. And you can meet those same people today, of course, uh, in the spirit world, but um, you know they became gods in their own right because mm -hmm. they were just spirits of high, de you know, high development. Yeah. And uh, and then of course there were other people who come up with concepts of the real God as mm -hmm. well. Again, not by having a relationship with God, 
but by, you know, supposition, by, by experimentation. And those people tried to promulgate their belief systems. They tried to impose, in fact, their belief systems on the earth by finding a suitable medium, you know, yes. a person who could communicate, and then pushing those particular beliefs to that person. Mm. So like Moses in the, in the Genesis uh, and Exodus, Exodus accounts yep. is an example of that. Yep. You know, how, uh, you know, he was a medium and spirits yes. imposed specific beliefs upon him. They tapped some things in, got him to tap some things in stone. Yep. And, uh, you know, in some cases they actually did the stone work themselves, some yeah. of the spirits, and that made it even more magical to make, yes. it believe, make them believe that it was God. And so then those beliefs became uh, a, a standard for that particular group of people who experience those experiences so many belief systems have come about from that particular process yeah. most of them in fact and even many of the modern ones have come about through the same process yeah mm. yeah excellent thank you what then does religion know about god well i'd have to say very little um in fact barely anything uh really most uh, religious faiths know very little about god the basic presumption of God on the planet today is one of a God of wrath mm -hmm. who will punish the wicked. There is this concept that somehow God made a flawed humanity and that God's laws are flawed mm -hmm. and that God's now trying to correct the whole thing somehow mm -hmm. by having some violent person, whether that be Jesus riding on his horse, mm -hmm. you know, and coming to destroy the wicked or some other violent event, you know, an Armageddon type event or something like that, that would um, punish the wicked for their bad deeds and, and rescue the righteous from the wicked. But there's not, high, they're not highly developed concepts whatsoever, whatsoever mm -hmm. really. There's a general presumption that God is no better than the average person on earth. And unfortunately, in most religions, there's a general presumption if you look at the actual faith and what it actually believes, which is the destruction of hordes of wicked. Yeah. There's actually a belief that, uh, that God is going to be, you know, a genocidal maniac, really. Yeah. And, and it's very blasphemous to mm. God himself. And so, yeah, religion knows very little about God, actually. And every time we join religion with God, we are making a huge mistake because religion does not know anything at all, barely, mm. about God. And, and because most of the so-called truths about God uh, have come via people who know very little more, mm. <laughs> even if it's from a spirit who knows very little more, unfortunately, the uh, truths about God are also hard to find. And while people like myself discovered the truths about God in the first century, many of those truths were distorted because of the emotional condition of yeah. the people that surrounded the teachings. And as a result of that got severely distorted. So, so there's a severe distortion of basic truths about God uh, even after my appearance in the first century. Mm -hmm. And so now most people on the planet really uh, believe that religions are somehow going to lead them to God or mm -hmm. or or somehow educate them about God, mm -hmm. when the reality is that they are, the religions are oftentimes do exactly the opposite of that. They degrade a person's opinion about mm -hmm. God. And actually, because many of the opinions are unscientific, cause people to become atheists yeah. as a result of the particular belief systems that are supported by religious faiths. Do you feel that there's any, there's there any people who are within religions who do have a relationship with God? They have a relationship with God to a point. Mm -hmm. And usually that point is whenever their personal truths, you know, is attacked in any way. Or, so their, or their preconceptions with. about themselves and the world are Yeah, Yeah. Of uh, course, uh, we've discussed in other discussions that God created a conscience and people yeah. have the ability to listen to God's truth via this conscience. Yeah. But very few do uh, yeah. at all yeah. because if it disagrees with their personal opinion, generally most people yeah. will accept their personal opinion yeah. before they'll accept anybody else's. Yeah. And, uh, and so, unfortunately, very few people on the planet actually have a relationship with God. And um, unfortunately, too, very few people in the lower parts of the spirit world have a relationship with God, in mm. fact, mm. as well. Um, you know, the majority of people are still living in the exactly the same way they used to live on Earth. They still consider God barely, uh, mm -hmm. if at all. And when they do consider God, they basically still believe that all such questions are unresolved. 
mm-hmm. and therefore not much wor- not s- worth spending any time on. Yeah. And and in the you know we've been watching some s- similar some presentations recently um, where you know the guys basically saying it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. And this is how most people on it earth. doesn't matter whether God's there or not. No. Yeah. And and it. <laughs> It definitely matters, you know what I mean? It's like, it's the thing that matters the most, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah. But, um, you know, this kind of populist viewpoint that, you know, as long as you're like ethical and loving, uh, it doesn't really matter what you believe. Mm. Uh, while, uh, you know, it's nice to accept all sorts of beliefs and, yes. and certainly not go to war for them, unfortunately, like most religions have done. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it does matter because your, your happiness and your bliss in your future life is largely dependent upon your relationship with God. So at the, and it, matters, it matters a lot, yeah. <laughs> you know. It's yeah. not something that you can dismiss like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, so uh, I wanted to put this question in about religion and God because the, the title of the interview series is Atheism and Religion. And to me, it's almost like three different things we're discussing. One is atheism, one is religion, and one is God. Yeah, or truth or about God. God's truth, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the truth about God. Exactly. And um, as, as everyone will see as we work through the questions, there's we can't say that because we're talking about God, we're aligned with religion, because in many cases, uh, many there's so, some elements of God's truth that are more aligned with atheism as well. That's right, there are. Yeah, yeah there are some elements of God's truth that are more aligned with atheism than they are about, uh, aligned with any religious faith. Yeah. So, you know, and that's to be expected, given that most atheists are quite scientific in their mm-hmm. understanding, and so therefore they discover scientific truth. So it's understandable that some atheists will have a better concept of, of you know, the truth about the universe, not so much the truth about God, no. but the truth about the universe than many religions will, mm. because they are more interested in true scientific endeavour. Mm. And although true atheists, you know, scientific endeavour on the planet is severely flawed as well, yeah. uh, for many Many reasons which we will probably discuss when we yes. through the through, <laughs> through, the, through, through this the interview questions. series. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and I asked earlier about if if you think there's anyone within a religion who has a relationship with God, and it it caused me to reflect on different stories that I've heard from people over the years where they were actually in a religion and they felt perhaps uh, some small connection with God or with their conscience or with the conscience and. And then felt oh, I can't, I can no longer be a part of this religion because what I feel is about different. God is different to what's being taught. So it mm. can happen in lots of different ways, can't it? It can, yeah. It's, a lot of people leave when they become more connected with God. They actually leave their religious yes. faith. That that's the irony of it. But then, if we don't deal with the disillusionment of that shift, you'll end up. Uh, either an atheist or very angry and cynical about religion and then that can be transposed onto god of and course so the biggest injuries on this planet are about god yeah without a doubt yeah and and as as such they they are the they have a huge impact on the happiness of every person on this planet yeah. the second biggest injuries are about are personal they're all about yourself and what you think is true whether it's not mm-hmm. and what you believe is loving when it's not yeah. and that also has a huge bearing on what you're going to believe yeah and uh, and unfortunately unless you deal with those sets of injuries you're not going to accept that your belief systems are false mm. so mm. <laughs> so you know and that is the case whether you're an atheist or whether you're a member of a religious faith mm-hmm. so you know, it's sometimes very hard getting rid of false beliefs. Sometimes it's harder getting rid of false beliefs than it is having no beliefs. Yeah. And and so this is also a problem. You know, belief systems are constructed through emotional energy that is through through tr- usually traumatic ch- child-based events or or um, what we'd call reinforcing child-based events. And you know, unfortunately, they predispose us to certain sets of beliefs and and desires Mm -hmm. and also openness to certain sets of uh, types of control yeah and uh yeah it's very very unfortunate but then that then something that god designed as a pure thing which is this desire to know truth within the heart Mm -hmm. becomes something in so impure that it becomes a you know you know the most powerful and influential uh historically the most powerful and influential organizations on the planet have been religions yeah and and also the most destructive. Yeah. They've caused many wars over the centuries. There's mil- billions of people who have died as a result of the wars created by religious faith and some of the terrible genocides mm-hmm. that have occurred 
historically have all been perpetrated by religions. So <laughs> Yeah, and what about this idea that, okay, religions went to war, um, but actually it was based on economic factors or, or other social factors? Yes, frequently religion is used as a scapegoat for war. Yeah. So while, you know, while we say they've caused war, well, a lot of times it's been used as a scapegoat for war. In other words, they're Protestant, we're Catholic, so we've got to fight because... Yeah. But really, there's other issues at play, power yeah. issues at play. Or, you know, they're Muslim and, and we're Christian, so we've got to fight because, yeah. you know, they killed Jesus, so we've got to fight them, that mm. kind of thing. Uh, we've got to oppress them. All of these are just excuses to be yeah. unloving. Yeah. That's all they are. And any reasonable person, and I'm sure any reasonable atheist, would mm. see that as an excuse to, be, you know, what a lot of the religions have perpetrated is just an excuse to be unloving. Yeah. Uh, you know, in the name of God, so yeah. in the name of something bigger than yourself. Yeah. And it's a, it's ludicrous, really. It is. Yeah. And I, th I think it's, um, I know um, as someone who, uh, through all my life up until my 20s, I was never open with anyone about having a feeling for God. Mm. And then and then I was. And um, I could feel in a lot of my friends uh, the feeling that I, I've got religion and can't I see that religion is the cause of all these problems on earth and yet, um, one, we're saying that's not necessarily the case, but two, to me, religion and God are just utterly separate uh, entities. Yeah. And yeah. so it, yeah. it, there's a lot of misconceptions. Well, there's so many yeah. misconceptions, isn't it? When I say I'm Jesus, people think I'm saying I'm God. Yeah. I've never said I'm God, never yeah. going to, yeah. but people want to say that I said that because... To the, in their mind, Jesus is God some, for some religions yeah. and a uh, ludicrous concept that a human could be God. Yeah. But anyway, that's what they want to believe. And, mm. and so, you know, they well, attack a person has, who doesn't, who's saying the opposite. Religion has taught them that in a lot of cases, haven't they? Yes, but it's not just that. Right. They, want, they want, you know, like I said, there's emotional reasons why you accept beliefs. Yeah. And so they want a saviour character who yeah. comes along and makes it easy for them yeah. To, to get rid of problems that they have created. That's yeah. what they want. Yeah. So they're looking for a saviour character that they can connect to that's a human, yeah. but also has godlike qualities. Yeah. You know, and this is what makes you open to such beliefs because you're looking for that in your life yes. and, you, and you're hoping that this person is going to come along and save you from the excesses and the evils of your own decision-making processes. Yeah. And, and that's never going to happen, actually, but you, you want to believe it's going to happen. So... Yeah. So you accept the belief yeah. that helps validate what you want to happen. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a, you know, why, it's a terribly uh, destructive thing to do because yeah. it blocks you to all this wonderful truth. But, you know, you desperately want it because you desperately want to believe that you're not responsible for what you did mm -hmm. and that somebody else should be. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so there's a lot of reasons why we accept these kind of faiths and these kind of concepts that are presented within faiths. Mm. 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 Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Why does the world accept that religions are the so-called experts on God? I've got no idea. <laughs> Why? You know, it's like, it's like, it's like saying somebody is not an expert on any matter. Yeah. And and let's face it, most religions are not experts on any subject whatsoever. They're not. They're not experts about social, you know, social matters. They're not ex experts about behavioural matters. They're not experts about God because we've just yeah. determined that. They're, they're not experts about pretty much most subjects, except for perhaps history. And mm -hmm. even then, it's a great, grossly distorted yeah. history, you yeah. know, because it's history written by people who made their own stories, yes. not rather than it being actual truth yeah. about history. Um, and they're very philosophical, and philosophic, philosophical arguments are all about postulating all these different concepts, but never arriving at a conclusion <laughs> yeah. because you because you believe you can't, right? Yeah. And and so when you look at all of the things that religions are doing, you've got to say, but they're not an expert on any subject whatsoever, it appears to be. Mm. So why are you thinking they're going to be an expert on the most important subject of the universe, yeah. the existence of God? How can they be? <laughs> you know, it's impossible. And yet they talk about God all the time. Like, does that have... That well, they talk about God as if they know God. Yeah. And this is where everybody goes, well, they talk... And this is another social problem on the planet if somebody talks as if they know something then you believe they know it yeah why yeah <laughs> it's you know i i hear many people when it comes to technology talk talking a whole heap of terminology that is obvious they, they know nothing yeah. about yeah. right yeah now it's the same when people talk about god mm. it's obvious through their actions yeah that they frequently know nothing 
about God whatsoever, mm -hmm. God's laws even, know nothing about God's law, know nothing about the human soul, know nothing about the character of God, mm. and yet they're talking as if they're an expert, mm. right? So why do we accept people who believe they're experts? Because we're always wanting an expert. We don't want to have to go through the process of personal discovery. Yeah. And we would rather somebody else do all the work for us. Mm -hmm. And when they appear to have done all the work for us, and they seem to be presenting some things where they believe they know it, even though it's not very logical, yeah. we have a tendency to accept it for no logical reason, mm. except emotional. Yeah. Because we have a predisposition to accept it, because we want to accept it, yeah. because if we accept it, it means we don't have to do the work and yeah. we don't have to be confused. Yeah. We don't have to have doubt. We don't have to have a lack of resolution about things. We want to resolve it so we can just get on with things. Mm. There's a lot of underlying emotional reasons why we accept that religions are the experts about God. Yeah. None of them are logically true. Yeah. Religions are not the experts about God. In fact, if anything, they are sometimes per perpetrate the most blasphemy about God. Mm. So they're definitely not the experts about God. Mm. So while there are some things that are known, you know, in religious faith, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot that is known in the Christian religious faith are paraphrases of my own mm. that, have, that have been retained mm -hmm. through history. And some, there's some of the truths in those paraphrases still remain. But generally speaking, there are very little truth in any religious faith yeah. uh, aside from what people wish to believe. Mm. And, and it's very unfortunate. Actually, and and perhaps some things that you earlier referred to as pretty basic, like the golden rule and things like that, which is really just about the treatment of others equally. Which is obvious if you're an atheist or a Christian, yeah. surely. Yeah. You know, if you treat somebody in a way you'd like to be treated, that's obviously a lovely ethical yeah. way of dealing with people. Yeah. And whether you're an atheist or you believe in God, mm. surely that's pretty obvious. If you yeah. treat people badly, you're going to get attacked. Yeah. That's also probably pretty obvious yes. <laughs> to most people, surely, yeah. you know. Yeah. And yet, what do we see happening in the world? Most people attack others still. Yeah, <laughs> but, that's right. It might be obvious intellectually, <laughs> but emotionally, obviously, we don't agree. And no. We, do something completely different. And and most people and most r religious faiths in their governance don't even practice that. They might no. say it, but they don't actually They practice don't practice it. it. You know, they you know, they attack and ostracize any person who disagrees with them. Yeah. You know, you know, as you know, we have been the, you know, object of a lot of attack from yeah. religious faiths. Um, and some of their attack is absolutely vile. Yes. There's no other word for it. It's yeah. just vile. Yeah. The, the worst of humanity yeah. purporting to be faith, you know, faithful to God yeah. you know, and using their self-righteous justification that they have the truth about God mm -hmm. as a method of being and speaking and doing vile things. Yeah, um, yeah it's just, just out of hand, really. Mm. Mm. So, so, yeah, why religions, why the world accepts that religions are the experts about God? Yeah, it, it, it is just definitely not a logical thing to do. Mm. And really, it demonstrates how stupid people are sometimes about religion. And when I say stupid, what I mean is there's no emotional connection to what's really going on. So now their intellect, they become like dumbed down mm. to the point where they'll do things and say things that are absolutely ludicrous to do and say, mm -hmm. and also blatantly false, mm. and also blatantly unloving, yeah. and yet they do it, all for the sake of maintaining their religious faith. Yeah, yeah, we can become very illogical and stupid people if we do that. Yeah, uh, and God made us to be intelligent creatures. He gave us a brain to think about things, and He gave us some logic to determine things, uh, but our emotions frequently interfere. Mm -hmm. and uh, and therefore cause us to believe crazy things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people say that I'm crazy and I go, what? You have a look at every religious faith that you can determine on the planet today. Man, there's a lot of very crazy beliefs in there that I do not have <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I cannot agree with. So when I look at it, yeah, most of the world's crazier than I am, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, let's move on to talk just briefly about atheism. Sure. So from the preface of his book, The God Delusion, Richard Dawkins makes God synonymous with religion and science 
and reason synonymous with atheism. Mm. Could you explain where Dawkins has gone wrong in his reasoning? Well, both suppositions are wrong. Mm. So let's look at the first supposition that God is synonymous with religion. As we've seen already in this discussion, God is not synonymous with, with religion. Religions have no idea about God. They are not scientific in their approach of discovery of anything related to God. Mm -hmm. And they have not got, obviously, a personal relationship with God because that is blatantly obvious based on their treatment of other people. Yeah. Right. So, so God and religion are not synonymous. Mm. And we've got to stop, stop believing they are. So that, yeah. that's one problem. The second problem is that the to make reason synonymous with a atheism. Yeah. In my mind, many atheists are just as unreasonable mm. as people who believe in God. Yeah. And so reason and logic is very much determined by and, and behavioral scientists know this, yeah. you know, psychologists know this, that reason and logic is very much determined by what is predetermined emotionally inside of a person. Mm -hmm. It's got nothing to do with what is the external truths of the universe m most of the time. It's got everything to do with what you want to believe yeah. and what you prefer to believe and what you prefer to accept. Unfortunately, the way science has approached things on Earth, which is not the same way that science is approached in the spirit world, mm -hmm. the way it's approached on Earth is that what you see is the only thing that is true or what you can measure with your instruments that you've created is the only thing that is true. Yeah. It is a very limited, and, and, and really quite silly, illogical thing to do, because obviously there are many things that have many hundreds of years ago we didn't, couldn't see, didn't understand, and now we do. Surely that continues to apply to the human and to the human, you know, the human being, mm -hmm. but also to things like God and the universe and how the universe works. And scientists, while they discover things physically, mm -hmm. and they are finding, and in fact there is a, you know, more and more disco f discovery physically going on, yeah. they also want to discuss, d discount anything research to do with anything related to spiritual matters, mm. which, which is like basically saying, like, okay, we all have within us a desire for spirituality, a desire to know what we cannot see, a desire to look at our future, mm -hmm. a desire to know whether we live beyond our current life, a desire to understand uh, what consciousness is and so forth, all these desires we have. And yet, and yet science is basically saying there's no explanation for all of those things scientifically yeah. because we're not willing to go down that road because there's no scientific way they've determined at this stage to go down the road. To measure it. To measure because it. Because science is all about establishing. Exactly. exactly. So they yep. dismiss all these areas yep. of investigation. It's like sort of, it's like, it's, it's really like saying, oh, I'm going to walk from here to Brisbane, which is our nearest city, 220 kilometres away. But what I'm going to do just to make it interesting is tie myself up and bind myself with ropes, put myself in a bag, cover the bag with, with rocks, and then determine what, you know, how fast I'm going to get to Brisbane. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's putting severe limitations mm -hmm. on our scientific development. And this is a major problem. So, so science is not being logical at this stage mm -hmm. in the way that it approaches matters, but neither is religion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so to make God synonymous with religion is a is a is definitely flawed. Yeah. But also to make logic and reason synonymous with science is flawed too, mm -hmm. because most of the time science isn't acting logically or reasonably. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. So. And and isn't it also saying that God is. It, in opposition to logic and reason. Of course, what a ludicrous idea. Yeah. If God does exist, yeah. it makes sense that God created everything we see and therefore is the supreme being of logic and reason. Yeah. So why would God not be synonymous with logic and reason? Yeah. Which, of course, God is. Yes. Right. So, yeah, to, to differentiate between those things is, a, is, a, is, a, is really a, an illogical concept. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that a person who prides themselves on their own logic, which mm -hmm. Richard Dawkins seems to appear to do, mm -hmm. is willing to be so illogical in some areas. Yeah. Uh, in that way, atheism has become like a religion. Yeah. It's become illogical, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, not supported by science, like, by science and no desire to discover what the science of God is. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and in that regard, it has its own religious format. It's, yeah. you know, if you're an atheist, you don't believe in God. Yeah. Well, if you're a scientist, you know, most scientists nowadays, although most scientists in the, in the 18th and 19th century believed in God, nowadays most scientists don't, mm. right? And 
why? Yeah. It makes no sense whatsoever. It's only because that is the pressure from the world around us. And of course, that's emotional. Yeah. That's where the behavioral side of things comes into play. Yeah. And that's always discounted. Yeah. You know, so a person's not capable of being logical and reasonable without addressing and removing emotional impediments to their logic and reason. Mm. And that is going to be required whether you're in the religion or whether you're an atheist. Makes no difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I find uh, with this particular interview, like with the interview between Cardinal Pell and uh, Richard Dawkins, um, I, I find that there's a lot of assumptions and premises mm -hmm. that are pre that predispose questions that are in themselves illogical and yeah. need to be like explained and 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 understood better yeah. it pre it, it sort of presupposes that if you believe in god you're not logical yeah. it also presupposes that if you're uh, an atheist that you're not um loving yeah you know th th there's predispositions the in each towards the other yes that that are false yes and like i've met many atheists that are loving yeah to people at least yeah. they might not be have a relationship with god mm -hmm. but they are at least more loving to people than many of the religious people that i've met yeah. and as i've said to you many of the religious people we have met mm. have been <laughs> vile yes. in their treatment of other people yeah and uh, many of the atheists that we've met while not uh you know while often intellectually condescending yeah have not been vile yeah <laughs> so yeah you know you know you, when you look at compare it from an aspect of love yeah which i feel needs to be the primary point of comparison mm -hmm. uh in re in this regard many religions fail more than many atheists do yeah so and you would say that the primary measure being love is essential because that's the quality of god or why is that the primary measure? Well, the primary measure being love is just that it makes sense. Yes. <laughs> because if you, if I treat you lovingly and you treat me lovingly, we're going to have a peaceful life and we're going to live the longest we can possibly live. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And I'm not saying that all atheists are loving because they're not. I've no. met many that are not. Yeah. I've, I've, in fact, I've had conversations with some who believe in the extermination of poor people around the world you yeah. know as a way of making it better for the world yeah. and things like that so i've met many unloving atheists mm -hmm. but i've also met many unloving christians yeah. or many unloving muslims as well yeah. and and so the love that exists within the person seems to be mm -hmm. not very connected to their religious faith yeah. or lack of it yeah. but it seems to be more about their personal ethics and morality in yeah. many cases yeah mm -hmm. Okay, so before we launch into the questions that were posed during the program, you've now made it very clear that there's there's different entities here that we're going to be discussing. One is religion, one is atheism, one is God, one is love, one is logic and reason. And none of those things equal the other in entirety. No, you know, although I can say God is love and God is logic and reason. Like mm -hmm. they're the only ones that I feel actually match, you know. Yeah. But but to say that atheism is logic and reason, well, I can't I can't agree to that because yeah. I see many illogical things being done by atheists mm -hmm. uh, that make no sense whatsoever, and mm. by scientists that make no sense whatsoever, actually. And uh, and on the other hand, I see very many unloving things done by people who believe in God. Yeah. So so there is no like uh, like on most issues that people question us on. We have to disagree with all, <laughs> which, which means that everybody's upset with us, but yeah. that's the way it goes. Yeah. And that's, that's the only way it can be. You know, if you support God's truth, um, in the end, you're going to support the loving, truthful and scientific, log scientifically logical explanation. Mm -hmm. And logic is different to fact. Yeah. We must also state fact is something that you discover through personal engagement of experience. And, the, and I've had 2,000 years of a certain experience that, and therefore can say, state certain things like, as fact. Mm -hmm. um, logic is just the assumption or presumption of fact. Yeah. Right? The idea that something might be factual. Mm. And, but that is very much determined by the emotional condition of the individual, mm. what, what their emotion will accept. Yeah. And, uh, and so we've got to see that logic in itself is not a... Like, fact is the end goal, yeah. not logic. 
Yeah. Logic may lead us to fact. Well, good logic will always lead us to fact. Well, good it? logic will lead us to fact, but yeah. unfortunately, most of us are not very good at good logic yeah. because we have terrible emotional impediments, mm -hmm. uh, belief systems and uh, things that we imbibe during our childhood experience that cause us to not be very logical at all. Yeah. So, so while true logic will lead us to fact, mm -hmm most of us are not even truly logical yeah and that applies to atheists as much as it applies to to religions although i would have to say that many atheists that, that i've met are more logical mm -hmm. than many religions and mm -hmm. that's why many atheists can't believe in things like the virgin birth for yeah. example <laughs> which yeah. which is of course never happened yeah but which religions would like to say happened yeah mm. so so you know we've got to be careful about when we talk about logic we're not really saying that's fact yeah Logic is a way of reasoning mm -hmm. that leads you potentially to fact, mm -hmm. but only if the logic isn't flawed. Yeah. So, you know, and frequently, unfortunately, human logic is flawed. Yeah. Mm. All right. <laughs> <laughs>